want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. Lord, we do want to lift up your name. And we've gathered together here at Virtual Church that we would do just that. Lift up the name of Jesus as well as to open the word and let the word speak to our hearts and bring hope and life and and uh, that we would be instructed in the ways of the Lord today is a very special day that we'll be able to do that together. And so I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you for being part of this virtual church experience. I know personally I'd much rather be with you in person, but certainly that is not the case at this moment. We certainly are praying for our nation. We're praying for people. We're praying for our leaders. But I want to pause on this day to give the Lord praise and to worship Him. I think what's important about praise is that we would declare the greatness of God, declare His attributes, declare His goodness. And so we're going to do just that as we sing this song, You Are God Alone. I want you to lift up your voice with me. Let's do it together. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone, and before time began, you were all you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend, you're the only God whose name and Praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. Declare it with me. Sing it. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. good times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone you are God alone from before time began you were on your throne you are God alone and right now in the good times and bad you are on Throne. You are God alone. Let's do verse 2 again. You're the only God. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. Mm, yes, Lord. You are God alone. And before time began, you were on your throne. You were God alone. And right now, in the good
good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. Well, that's what you are. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. That's what you are. Say it again. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you are. Even in this world, he's unchangeable. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you are. You are God. From before time began, you are on your throne. You were God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you were on your throne. You were God alone. Just one more time. You are God alone. From before time began, you were throne. You were God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You were God alone. He is our God. Amen. Even in these times, even in these moments, He is our God. Jesus, you are loving, you are gentle, you are God. Jesus, you are faithful, you are able, you are strong. Debbie and I used to sing this uh, several years ago, and uh, in light of all that's going on, the song came to me as I was doing some stuff on the computer, and I found this song, and I, uh, Debbie was playing it, and I pulled it up, and I just listened to it, and I thought, this is a song that we need today. This is a song that declares that even in the circumstances that we're facing, Jesus is strong. Jesus is our answer. And so I submit it to you today, and I ask that you join me in making as well this declaration about Jesus. We're going to pray in just a moment, but as we lead into that moment, I want to declare the goodness of Jesus. And the issues that you're facing, maybe, maybe you're on cloud nine, I don't know what you're doing, but in every situation, God is with you, and the Lord is your God, and my God too. Let's declare it together, shall we? Jesus, you are loving. Jesus, you are loving. You are gentle. You are God. Jesus, you are faithful. storm winds blow. There is safety, there is comfort in your arms. For your word declares you will never change. You'll uphold me and protect me by your power. Oh, 
dark clouds rise Let the storm winds blow There is safety, there is comfort in your arms For your word declares You will never change You'll uphold me and protect me You are strong. You are our strength. I pray that the strength of the Lord, the, the undercurrent of the Lord, the uh, stability that comes from the name of Jesus shall touch our lives. Just a few things, Lord. I pray first of all for people here that are going through issues in their bodies. I pray healing. Lord, I've seen healing with my own eyes. I want to see healing again. The Bible says signs and wonders follow them who believe. And Lord, we are a believing people today. I pray that the hand of God shall bring healing. I pray the hand of God as well shall bring guidance. Lord, let the hope of the Holy Spirit fill us and let us be filled with the mighty joy that springs from deep within. That even in the midst of sorrow, we do not mourn as others who have no hope. We have hope. So, Father, I pray that the power of the Lord shall be known. Such power that it will hold back the forces of darkness. It will release a spirit of joy and let the life flow, the Holy Spirit. Like a mighty stream, let the life flow, the Holy Spirit. Fill us in Jesus' name. Amen. I always wait in anticipation for something to happen That's at the end of prayer. So I'm going to wait for the testimonies to come from you on what God has done in your life. Wow. Praise the Lord. Well, thanks, Debbie. It's good. To... I wanted to just uh, share a couple of announcements with you. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know that we have an opportunity to put on a webinar, and it's called The Financial Wisdom That Impacts the Kingdom. Do you know the Bible gives us wisdom uh, throughout the scriptures that helps us Make a difference in the kingdom. And so we're teaming together with Thrivent Financial, our friends here at Thrivent Financial, which is a Christian financial organization that they want to honor the Lord and they've given, been given people tools to help manage their funds and manage their money. So this seminar will be important to you. It's, it's going to be a webinar. You can join online wherever you are. And if you're interested in this webinar, uh, contact Pastor Stevens. You'll see the information there on the screen. And uh, Pastor Donna will help you and let you know what's happening in that regard. Secondly, I want to let you know, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being such a great team of people that we rally together for the cause of Christ. And, and so thank you for giving. I want to encourage you that to pray. Keep praying. And we need to pray corporately. I have to tell you, this last week when we had our Wednesday prayer meeting, what a, what a, what a joy to have so many people there. 
And you know what? We need to keep praying. And we need you. We need more people to get involved. We send out a link in, the, in that email. And if you're not getting our emails, let us know what your email is. We'll add it to the list. And we send out links. We send out texts. And you can just log in and join us live. And you can participate in praying yourself. So join us for prayer. That's on Wednesdays. And of course, Pastor Donna is on Sunday or on Mondays, I should say, at 930 in the morning. And uh, on Facebook, you can catch her at Prayer Hut Live. And then join me if you want. On Sunday, uh, after lunch on Sunday, I stop eating until Monday night. And I use that as a time of fasting. And I'm just praying that God is going to break the strongholds of the evil one in our land. And certainly in our, in our world, in our lives. And so you can join with me and fast. And let's pray that God is going to keep doing some wonderful things in our lives. Today I have a very special uh, moment here. I thought it would be fun to hear a testimony of what God is doing. I just love hearing what God is doing in people's lives. And so I asked Lori Curtis to come and share some, some things that God has been doing in her life. So let's listen to Lori. Hello, this is Pastor Kurt, and I'm looking forward to talking with Lori Curtis. I was kind of excited to hear uh, some of the things that's been going on in her life. And I thought it would be fun to have a testimony today on the provisions of God. And Lori, I, I found out recently that uh, God's been doing some great things in your life. And maybe you can give us uh, an understanding of what's been happening. Okay. Um, well, back in March, um, my job kind of got cut off. Um, I was working for a company that was remodeling hotels. And well that industry kind of got cut short, so I got laid off. Um, but uh, the unemployment department was very slow at getting me the unemployment money. It was, took like 10 weeks. Wow. So during that time, first of all, I didn't really worry. I knew God has me. But uh, he did provide in the nick of time, and, and he did, through many sources, um, provide what I needed. And I can get into detail, but if you want to direct me, that'd be fine. <laughs> I mean, I well, had gifts give us, of give us, give us Give us an example, you know, of how God provided for you during that 10-week period of time. Okay. Well, I had a... A friend that rented a room from me for a month. Wow. So that helped financially. And then I had uh, my brother give me money. Then I had a birthday and people gave me money. And then God provided odd jobs for me to do. Um, well, even right now, I'm, I'm taking care of an elderly lady while her adult children are gone on vacation. I think, you know, what's uh, significant that you just said is that oftentimes when we pray for a, 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 an amount of money, whatever it might be, we tend to look for that whole lump sum, you right. know, and, and instead what you're sharing is God provided through many different avenues in mm -hmm. various different ways that your yeah. need would be met. Would right. you agree? That, and it's neat to see that take place because frankly what we tend to do is we squander maybe the little blessings mm -hmm. looking for the big blessing yeah, don't and uh, so god su god supplied that through various and many ways for you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. also odd jobs came along you know when i found out someone needed their house clean i'd go and clean their house and um somebody else needed uh, some errands so i ran some errands for someone a couple of different people um i was just willing to do it, it helps to feel um uh, what's the word it it helps to feel like you're being um useful it just helps to feel useful not only getting doing it for money but doing it because you feel useful not just uh, sitting around doing nothing so you found value in actually doing something uh, to bless other people at the same time you were being blessed. Right, right. 
was there a particular passage of scripture or a song or was there something that that touched your heart that helped carry you forward during that i would say dry time but let's say testing time that uh, trial time um it may not be the one you you think of but the one that i thought of was uh elijah when the um when the crow or whatever brought him food yeah and uh I was thinking, how much food can a crow put in his mouth at the same time? Probably one bite at a time for us. Oh, that's a good one. So if the crow was, if God was sending the crow to me, it was one bite at a time and it was, you know, satisfying. (laughs) Well, you know, what's fascinating about that is just like the manna, really, right? In the wilderness, the manna came every day. And if they tried to hold it over for the next day, it it Mm -hmm. rotted. Of right. course, until the Sabbath, then they were able to hold it for two days, which was a miracle in itself. Mm-hmm. But all of that is designed by God to have us, have us keep our trust in him mm-hmm. and to trust him, as, as he said, give us this day our daily bread. Right. And certainly you, you saw that lived out in your life, right? Right. And one more thing I want to give God glory for is uh, not a bill was late. Wow. And uh, there was, I mean, I always thanked God for bills paid, you know, up to date, gas in the car, a little bit of cash in my purse, and a little bit of money in the bank. You know, I was always thankful for God for those things. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, you you touched my heart today, and I think you touched others as well. Would, Would you want to pray? I'm sure there's people that are watching this that that maybe they're going through some moments. And uh, I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind praying for them, that God sure. would be the Jehovah Jireh in their life. Would you mind? Okay. Not okay. at all. Okay. All right, Lord. Yes. So I pray now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I lift up anybody and everybody who's listening, who, are, who is in need of anything. Because provision comes not only for our finances, but for our souls, you know, our whole being. Yes. So, Lord, I ask that you would, your, your, your word says your arm is not too short. Yes, Lord. So I ask that you would provide and release to everyone listening in ways that they may not uh, have been looking for. You would provide and release those things that they need. Yes, Lord. In their spirit, in their soul. Yes, Lord. In their body for encouragement and hope and yes, abundance. Lord. I ask, Lord God, that you would give the grace of abundance to people. And if there's opportunities that you would like to provide for people so that they can help someone and as well as receive a blessing, then I pray that you would provide those opportunities too. Yes, that your people, your saints of God, would start being connected with each other on a level where we're actually helping one another in our personal lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, today we're continuing in our series on fit faith, fit faith. And we are, we've been talking about the measurements of fitness in the book of James, that when we exercise those aspects, it increases our faith. And we looked at uh, struggles and trials where James says that we need to count it all joy. We skipped ahead to the eighth part in this series on resisting the devil. But today we're going back here to part two. I'm sorry we're jumping around, but here we are. We're we're going back to part two where we're talking about obeying God. Obeying God. Isn't obedience tough? Obedience is one of the hardest things, even as a child. If you've been around children, you know obedience is hard. But even in our lives today, we need to be obedient to the Lord. And so in chapter 1, verse 19 of James, it says this. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Now, I want to fill in here this, the background here of where he's coming from. Remember, he just came from talking about struggles and trials. And he, he puts this in here just to remind us that we should not be so quick 
to complain about going through struggles and trials. And I don't know about you, but whenever I go through a trial, the first thing on my mind is, Lord, what did I do? Did I commit some great sin? Have I done something wrong? Did I make a wrong judgment? And you know, those things are certainly things we need to ask and we need to talk about. But you know what? We need to develop this heart and this attitude that says, Lord, you know what's best. I'm a child of God. The steps of a righteous person are ordered of God. Your hand is there with me. And if you're trying to get my attention, here I am. But he lists out two or three things here. He says, "Be uh, what does he say? Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And I like what... I like what one commentator says, Warren Worsby. He says, therefore, Christians should not be swift to speak and complain when trials come. Rather, they should be swift to hear the word, trust it, and obey it. After all, God works out his will in our lives when we are patient, not when we are angry. That's right. God works out his will when we are patient with him. You know, remember when your children, as you were raising them, when they threw temper tantrums, you were more inclined not to bless them or not to grant their desires. You wanted to, you needed to discipline them. Well, the thing is this, God, he, he can't work in us when we're angry. We have to humble ourselves before him. We'll get to that in a second. We have to come before him. And I love these three words, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. In other words, keep yielding to the Lord. Now allow me please, just to pull aside for a moment from that text and use those three steps to talk about what we need to do on our personal level. What I mean by that, the relationships that we face on a daily basis. And when things happen in our world and when things happen in our relationships, are we not so quick to pass judgment Are we not so quick to get angry because we think this is happening and that is happening? I think these three steps are important for us even in our normal everyday life. Let's be quick to listen. Let us be slow to speak and slow to get angry. Now, the reason I bring that up is because there's this overall feeling that I get that people, including me, it's easy to get caught up with the argument It's easy to get caught up in the fray, in the battle. But you know what? God wants us to not get caught up in the fray. He wants us to hear his voice so that we can act according to his purpose and his means in our life. Why? Because I think this, people are looking for wisdom. And if we are in the midst of all the anger, if we're in the midst of the fray and the battle, fighting with words, We cannot hear from God in order to provide wisdom to a world that is needing it. In short, I'm saying this. Our world is needing an answer. They think that they need the answer of the world, but you know what they need? They need a spiritual answer. And God has called us to bring that spiritual answer to the world. I love that passage in Scripture where Saul was looking for the donkeys. Remember that? And and the servant said, there is a man. I want to be that man. I I think we need to be that person. If you're a woman, you need to be that woman where people can come to and get a word of wisdom and a word of spiritual insight in order to deal with the issues of their lives. And it's more than just fighting and doing political arguments. It is hearing from God and responding accordingly to his word. Remember in Revelation, there's that phrase that says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Let us have an ear to the Lord Jesus Christ and let us hear what he is saying, not what the world is saying. Let us hear what he is saying and then we can provide a word of wisdom and a word of comfort to our world. So listen, be quick to listen, be slow to speak and be slow to get angry. But let's move on. We go to verse 21 where it says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. So notice, we're the ones that's supposed to get rid of the filth. How many times have you prayed, Lord, 
get rid of this desire in my life. Lord, give me freedom from this desire. But still, we surround ourselves with the tools or with the stuff that cause us to go astray. But here, James is telling us, we need to clean out the stuff in our life that cause us to, be, to go astray, that cause us to not listen to the Lord. In other words, purify our hearts. You know, in the Old Testament, they use the word consecrate. What a great word. Consecrate your hearts. Consecrate your lives to the Lord. And as you consecrate your lives to the Lord, he will be able to use you. Get rid of that filth. Don't dabble on it anymore. Get rid of the evil that's in your lives. And then he says, humbly accept the word. Humbly accept the word. It is, and what does humble mean? You yield to the Lord. In the Greek, it means to take hold of it, to receive into one's family, to bring up or to educate. In other words, acceptance is this part of, of, of taking a hold of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he even adds in that little nuance there as of receiving one's one into your family. In other words, you bring the word into your life. It's not just into your brain. It's into your life. You bring the word and you become one with the word. Connected. We, talked, we looked at that last week. Joined it together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Take hold of it. Don't fight the fight. Graft the word into your life. And you do that by yielding. You do that by uh, living in obedience to the Lord. Remember when the uh, parable of the soils, Jesus talked about some seed fell on hard soil, some seed fell along the path, some seed fell among the thorns, and then there was seed, and the seed was the word of God, and then there was some seed that fell on fertile soil. He's saying this, what James is saying is, be fertile soil so that the seed, the word, can be planted in your life. And when that word is planted because of the environment of, of health and the spiritual health and the environment that is free from the thorns and the hardness of the world, that seed can blossom and that seed can grow. So humbly accept the word into your life. Verse 22, but don't just listen to God's word. And here's where we come into obedience. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. You see, acceptance of the word is shown by action. Acceptance of the word is shown by action. One person was talking about the difference between Paul and James in terms of works. And he says, Paul was saying that one is declared righteous by God apart from the works of the law. In other words, Paul was focused on being justified before the Lord, and we cannot be justified by our works. And then he goes on, he says, James, by contrast, was saying that a person's faith produces works that vindicate his faith in Christ as genuine. In other words, he's saying this. James is saying that when you live out, when you work the good works, it is an indicator that the inside has been transformed. When you have been changed in your heart, it's going to show forth in the works that you do. Another person said this in the Life Study Bible. says, James pointed out here that simply hearing the word of God does not mean that we believe it. But by acting on what we hear, we show that we truly believe. Faith is an action word. Who, those who claim to have faith because they hear and know the word of God, yet do not practice it in their lives, have deceived hearts. Wow. In other, he's saying this. He says, James is saying, listen, if your heart is changed, it's going to show forth in the acts and the works that you do. So he's saying, obey God by acting out what the Lord has done in your life and live a changed life. And he says in this last part, he says, fooling yourselves. You're only fooling yourselves. I looked that word up. You know what it means? You are fooling yourself which means to cheat by false reckoning. To cheat by false reckoning. In other words, you, are, you have wrong premise. And as, as you are building your thoughts and your processes on a wrong premise, you are cheating yourself. You are fooling yourself. You are fools by saying, well, I don't have to change. 
And how many of you have heard that before? Do you ask people, do you believe in the Lord? Oh, yeah, I believe in God. Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Half the world thinks they're Christian. But are they really? We'll talk about that in just a second. I'll give you some scripture to support all that. Verse 23. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror and you see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, let me say that again. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So he's saying this, as a physical mirror shows what your appearance may be, so the word reveals what your heart is. And if you see the wickedness of your heart and repent upon such revelation, you are only, if you see the wickedness of your heart and not repenting, you are only doing yourself a disfavor. You are deluding yourself. And so he's saying, if you look at a mirror and you go on your way and you, don't, and you forget what you've seen, you're deluding yourself. Don't look in the mirror of the Holy Spirit and then not be transformed in your life. If God reveals something to you and you just keep on and you forget about it, you're not obeying and you're not submitting yourselves to the Lord. We need to submit ourselves to God and let him change our hearts and let the heart show forth the work, through our works the blessing of God in being changed. And he goes on, verse 26. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for the orphans and the widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. What does the word religion mean? Religion, if you look it up in the Greek, it simply means the external, that which consists of ceremonies. So he's saying this, let those things that you do as a religious expression or as the outgrowth of your faith, let those things that you do be wholesome in this. He says, care for the people around you, widows and orphans, and then don't let the world corrupt you. In other words, stay pure in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the measurement of faith is obedience. And if I don't obey, I don't have faith. Obedience is very important. And obedience causes us to do something. Remember when you would tell your teenager, go clean your room? And then you would come back later and they didn't move? Your, your inclination is, did you hear me? Because if they hurt you, they would have responded. It's the same thing in the Spirit, in the, in the presence of the Lord. If we hear the Lord, we respond. And James goes on earlier and he says, and respond quickly. We respond, and the level of our faith of responding helps us understand what obedience is all about. Now, I went through and I picked out some other verses here that talk about obedience by doing. Look at these in John chapter 15. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command. That's pretty powerful. In Romans chapter 3, it says this, these and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirement of God's law. Listen, when we fulfill God's commandment of love, it's because we are actually doing it. It's not that we're thinking it, we're doing it. It's not that we, we believe it in our minds, we're actually doing it. 1 John chapter 2, and we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commands. And what are his commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. 1 John chapter 3, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. The inverse there is true. Those who do right, those who uh, live out the word of God in their lives, 
They are the ones who are going to inherit the kingdom of God. And then Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us act that out. Let us do it by actually following every in every part of our lives. And then lastly, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. The measurement of our faith in this, in this context today is found in the level of our obedience to the Lord. If we have great obedience, we have great faith. If we have great disobedience, we have less faith. And so as we obey the Lord, we are stepping out in great obedience, and that obedience builds up our faith. And faith is needed. Now, remember, faith is not some esoteric thing out there. It's not some ethereal thing that's ungrabbable. It's not something that I just work up by, if I just think it and think it and think it, I'm going to have more faith. No, as faith comes by hearing the word of God, and the word comes alive in us, then we act out that word, and the word causes us to become stronger as we live it out, as we exercise it. Debbie, as you know, had a couple of weeks ago I had some procedure in terms of her, of her heart, and fortunately everything was great. But you know what it did? It weakened her body, that process, and she had to build back the strength in her body by actually getting up and walking and exercising. Even in my, when I went through surgery, I, I was tremendously weakened. It was amazing how fast your body can atrophy, the muscles can atrophy. And I found myself weak, and I had to... Took a long time, that, and some would even wonder if I'm even there yet. It took a long time for the muscles to build back and get the strength back. You see, when we exercise our faith, we become stronger. And listen, what we need in our world today are some strong Christians who have great faith. Great faith so that when we are looking at the world around us and, they're in, and it's in disarray and it's a lot of struggles and there's a lot of confusion... People of great faith can rise to the occasion, hear from God, and speak a word of wisdom that will bring life and health to a world that needs it. We need people of faith. Will you join me and simply be obedient to the word of God that his life will live through us? And when his life lives through us, it will have an impact in our world. Let me pray with you real quick. Lord Jesus, I bring us to you, Lord. I bring us to you that we will no longer be, as it says, lukewarm. We will not straddle the fence or live in mediocrity. But today, I pray that there will be a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit that will cause us to hear the word and then act on the word. That the word would not simply be a peripheral thing on the, on the, on the, on the circum, on the, around the edges. But Lord, it will reach down into our heart and change our being so that we can live a life for you. The goodness of God reign. In Jesus' name, amen. This last week we had a men's Bible study. And you can join us, by the way, on Tuesday nights for men's Bible study. And we got to talking there. We're in the book of First Timothy. And someone brought up a phrase that we often, we often use. And the phrase was something like, and there's nothing wrong with the phrase. We need to be an example. We need to live a life that's holy so that we can be an example to the world. And you know, and you know sometimes when you hear a phrase and you've heard it all your life, and sometimes when you hear a phrase, you go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to ponder that just for a moment. And I, I pondered that. I thought, you know, there's more to it than just living a life so that you can be an example to the world. And I begin to reject that phrase. I begin to reject it because I don't want to live my life just so that I can be an example. And I don't think God 
has designed us to live our lives just to be an example to the world. But he wants us to live our life of holiness because it's good for my life. It's good for me. When I obey him, it's not just a testimony. That's secondary, I think, to the primary reason. And the primary reason is that we would be blessed and we would benefit by simply obeying God. Now, what happens as a result of that? As a, as a result of me being blessed, as a result of my life being touched of him, the spillover effect takes place. Where, yes, I'll be an example. And yes, people can glean from what's happened in my life. But my primary responsibility, my primary objective is to be obedient to him so that he is honored and I receive of the blessing. My life is blessed as a result of it. And then it will bless other people. So we need to be obedient to God. Yes, for the example, but no. It goes much deeper than that. The principle is much more rich than that. And the principle is quite simply because it's good for me and it's good for you to be obedient to the Lord. And thus, I want to sing this dedicatory song. And it's, it's a song that you most of us know. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. And I want you to pray this song as we close today. Let's sing it together. This is my desire to honor you Lord with all my heart I worship you all I have within me I give
Jesus, you're my everything. Lord, have your way in me. Do it again, Jesus. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, You know, when you dedicate your life to the Lord, and by the way, if you meant this prayer, this song prayer, do you know the Lord forgives you of your sin and cleanses you from all the unrighteousness in your life and puts you in right standing with Him, which means you can be in right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just a God who's out there, but a God who's in here, in you. And the Lord, if you allow Him, will transform your heart. Get rid of the anger and the pain and the hurt. And be in right relationship with Him, which brings peace, and comfort, and joy. So, I just want to say, today, if you made that decision, the Lord is with you. And by the way, if you made that decision, let me know. Send me an email. And, and let me connect with you. Would you do that? Well, this kind of wraps up our time today. I want to thank you for this moment. It's been rich. And before you go, allow me to bless you. And this blessing comes from 1 Thessalonians, where it says, And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow, just as our love for you overflows. And may he, as a result, make your hearts strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father, when our Lord Jesus comes again with all of his holy people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. Have a great week this week.